My name is Christopher Gudemese, and I'm a participating artist in the Film and Video Festival. My name is Michael Bisbee Durlam. I have a piece entitled Seize, Duplicate, Repeat that I made in collaboration with Jody Wood. It is video art and also documentation of performance art. I consider myself a performance artist and a video artist alike, but performance art is my niche. Um, I, I approached video art with performance art in mind. I didn't approach video art with a sense of thinking I have to have a plot, characters, a beginning, middle, and the end, where really I just used this time-based medium to record something that was happening to me. I think video art is still a difficult category for general audiences to understand. Video art began and has existed for the most part as um, documentation of performance happening in real time. And sometimes these performances are very meditative or ritualistic or cathartic for the performer and not necessarily entertaining for the viewer. Everything is so technology-based in today's world that if people are sitting in front of a screen in general, rather be video or, or film or experimental film, they're probably looking to be entertained. You know, watching someone scrub the floor with their hair and letting it go on and on can be a lot for someone to want to sit and stay with. It asks more of, of the viewer, I feel, than uh, action-packed entertainment or cinema does. Experimental film, however, is not always there to entertain you, it's not at all. Like art, it is there to make you question your reality, it's there to make you think differently about things or to have your relation to everyday things be different or take you out of your element in some way, shape, or form, even if it's just to say, wow, this is beautiful, um, and not in a, ooh, this is fun, or I love this song kind of a way. Video art has so often been this durational thing, this, this thing that at times, even as a viewer, I feel like I'm kind of held hostage when I'm trying to sit through some video art pieces because they can be so boring or they can be, uh, they're, they're just not entertaining, so I have to be in the right mindset to have patience for that. And I can easily sit through a two-hour-long movie if it's good, but watching a 15-minute-long documentation of a performance or a video art piece sometimes can feel like two hours or four hours. And I think a big part of that is I don't have a suspension of disbelief with, with it. Um, I think video art, it, the way that it's presented, usually rather it be in installation or rather it be just general point of view with the camera, that it's, people kind of understand that, oh wait, this is not a movie, this is not a, uh, you know, a clip on YouTube of someone singing a pop song to me, this is something different, and I need to look at it differently. Um, at least good video art will do you that. It'll take you out of your element of, I'm watching a movie with a character, or I'm watching a YouTube clip with a girl from wherever singing the new song on the, on the radio and I'm going to bounce my head and enjoy it, video art doesn't do that. Film is all about typically having a suspension of disbelief. It's a story and the viewer going along on the ride and it's like a narrative and you, you, you feel it when the actor is, is crying or when they're laughing or their car breaks down. You think their car is breaking down. You don't think, oh, they brought in this car and, you know, the point is usually get the viewer along for the ride. Video art uh, typically has never been about that and it's becoming more and more uh, ci cinema-like but with the beginnings of video art it was a lot of times documentation of performance and nothing to do with the viewer believing a narrative that's happening. Video art leans itself to have less of a highbrow than film. Film, in all its beauty, um, has a lot more editing, has a lot more money behind it, where video, anyone can get a video. I'm making a video right now. It's, we have video video technology on our phones, we have video technology on most all computers, we have video technology in the streets, even you know surveillance, video is everywhere you go, where film is a different process and a different comes with a different 
um, culture of production where video is instant, it's more accessible. I think the reason why a lot of video art is more cinematic because people have access to better equipment now. You know, consumer grade equipment can shoot high definition or whatever else. And also, I think people want to entertain a little bit more too. There is something interesting. Like I discovered when you relate time-based medium now in relation to now, in relation to yourself um, and what you're doing using your body, um, not shooting a scenery or, or shooting a character, but shooting yourself and your relation to yourself. Yeah, especially with, in relation to gender politics and, and ethnicity, I enter the dialogue of, well, I have, I'm interested in these things, these social issues. Let me start with myself and how I relate to myself. You know, how do I feel about my own skin? The tar piece. How do I feel about my own skin in this weird context of color and putting on a mask of black, literally black acrylic paint? And looking back at that image, and what happens then? Panic. <laughs> Panic and kind of like a self-remorse, but a comfort in that. You know, all those things start to come up when you take these mediums and you enter them into the artist studio, which has been my experience. Hi there, I'm Steve Snell, the creator of the video that you're about to see. And I thought I'd just give you a little bit of background and context before it goes ahead and plays. With, with the piece that I'm, I'm sharing with you guys here, uh, my intent is to kind of adopt uh, standards of you know, film movie making, like montage and epic music to kind of entertain in a way that invites you to stay with the video piece. One goal in the work that I make is not to just entertain, but to offer entertainment as a, as a way to hopefully get you to engage with other elements of the artwork. I've definitely made some videos myself that are extremely difficult to sit through. As to why, I don't really have a good answer. <laughs> I think a lot of video art isn't necessarily meant to be set, you know, to be experienced beginning to end. It's usually, or it's often designed to be in a space also that doesn't invite that kind of stay. You know, movie theaters are very comfortable and dark and they smell great with popcorn and you can buy candy and like hang out and have a great time. Most art galleries and museums don't really provide that kind of comfort and um, they don't have snacks. What I, what I find amazing is that the production power of the everyday consumer like you or I are now able to afford technology that can produce film-like effects that at bef before was just not accessible to artists or everyday consumers. And so I think the nature of video art has a lot of potential to change to the epic quality of film. And it's in that territory that I like to play and um, explore my work. MFA Thesis Quest is the project that I created around an adventure specifically for my MFA thesis uh, in studio art at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Basically, it's an adventure that directly addressed the situation and expectation of creating a master's thesis. It, the performance took place uh, a little over a year ago in the Berkshire Mountains of Western Massachusetts. And this video that's about to play is one element of that performance. Since the adventure ended, I've created multimedia installations, paintings, drawings, as well as told stories about this adventure. And I kind of consider all of this a part of a larger artistic practice that I sometimes refer to as adventure art. So the video that you will be seeing is kind of, well, it's more of the idealized Hollywood version of what took place over this week of events in late October of 2010. I hope that you enjoy it. Thanks for watching.